first thing first, uh, thank you for your time, Roberto, of course. Can you explain us your career until now? What is your path in, in Fiat from the start to until now? So I consider myself a, a designer, but also um, an interacting person because um, I started in 89 at Fiat Centro Stile, uh, hired by Hermano Cressoni, has been uh, the head of design uh, in Turin. Uh, Hermano was also the former Alfa Romeo director in the, uh, in the traditional Alfa Romeo company. So the, the Giuseppe Scarnati uh, pupil. And so that's why I have a lot of consideration and love for my first boss because uh, it was the, he was the guy who also recognized in me um, a trend to see innovation, to see um, uh, an adaptation uh, to the new systems because uh, Fiat uh, in uh, 1989 was in process to purchase the first uh, computer-aided styling uh, system. Purchased in, uh, in Utah, United States, uh, in Salt Lake City by a company who was doing, uh, producing a flight simulator. <laughs> and and uh, the, you know, I was um, I brought my portfolio, and uh, this was uh, an, um, an an ad uh, an advertisement uh, published by Fiat on uh, the the most uh, famous uh, newspapers, Corriere della Sera, Repubblica, and so I and I replied to this uh, ad advertisement uh, because Fiat was in search of designer, and uh, I was hired in. Uh, in a selection of more than 300 people because of my openness to accept computer also as a way to model and get, um, you know, technical phases out of my sketches. And um, it was good because I started with uh, electric cars because uh, basically no one was so attracted by these projects in the studio. And uh, I found a studio with uh, Chris Bengal uh, has an ex exterior design responsible. I found a studio where uh, Peter Davis from uh, all these guys came from uh, Opel. Uh, Peter Davis was another American designer who moved from Opel design and was uh, leading interiors. And Mike Robinson was leading advanced design. So it was a pretty international um, department. Andreas Zapatinas was joining uh, from uh, Art Center, Pasadena, uh, a Greek designer who actually designed the, 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 the Fiat Barchetta. So it was a, a very international team and um, very open in terms of research. And my first project or application has been a three-seater, 2.5 meters long city car called Fiat Downtown. It was the commercial name we gave to the car when we presented at Geneva Motor Show in, um, in 1993. So the project took a lot of time in terms of uh, engineering, in terms of construction of the body shell. It was a very serious program of, of, of a full electric vehicle, zero emission, um, three-seater, center steering. For such a small compact package, uh, we decided to have uh, the center steering position to have uh, the two passengers uh, on each side of the driver, no one on the back. And that was, uh, you, you know, this project was uh, fulfilled of keywords like no one in the back and, um, and moved by an efficiency in terms of uh, use, usage of the space uh, in the cockpit uh, uh, at 80% of the space uh, uh, engine in the wheels which was uh, a request of the design team to have uh, the traction, so the, 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 the engines. Uh, in. And then, uh, uh, okay, so this was, uh, so the first program, very engaging for me. Uh, I was not the only one designer in the, in the project. There were two guys from Pasadena, uh, our center college of design, who joined me in this program. Uh, uh, Darren Cades uh, for interior, John Kinsey for exterior, but they were involved very soon on a, 
on a, on a, on a show car called the Fiat Shia. This car was, uh, was the concept car uh, beside uh, the Fiat Punto launch. And so they, 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 this car. Fabrizio, can you, can you make mute? Yeah, okay. Yeah. And, um, and uh, so it's, uh, it was a very interesting program because I found myself pretty alone <laughs> with engineers. Uh, completing the project and uh, having uh, uh, this control over interior and exterior design. Uh, basically, it was a very total experience, also in terms of uh, the dialogue with the engineers, with also the company of the batteries, that was a, a Switzerland, uh, a Swiss company called Brown Boveri. Um, this was, uh, as a designer, as a product designer, because I graduated in Rome, in product design in 1985. So uh, this experience has been exactly what I expected from a car company. So having a control of the project and uh, moving from ideation inside out. This has been my philosophy until, uh, until Cinquecento. I mean, uh, not uh, refusing the idea to have uh, a, 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 a perfect interior um, packaging, especially for uh, uh, giving dimension and sizes of for everything regarding commands and visibility, ingress, ingress, um, and this is this is my point. I mean, uh, I'm I'm crazy for cars. I'm uh, a maniac for sketching, but uh, the idea to shape the cars in a very innovative way, moving from the you know, the, 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 the necessity, the quality of the, the transportation is, uh, to me, uh, of uh, paramount importance. And um, so that's why this program has been uh, the ingress to the, to the Fiat way. That's, um, in, in some ways, uh, I, I exploded in, a, in many projects uh, during the years because yeah. this was the first but uh, another electric car came the, 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 in 94 with a research project of the Centro Ricerche Fiat, the Fiat Research Center. And uh, this was uh, another zero emission vehicle with a very interesting solution for the space frame of the, um, the body shell, which was uh, composed by extruded uh, components and uh, and the, the, the links, the joints of the, of the elements were uh, die-cast aluminum uh, uh, components. So it was a, a project led by the respect of the technology contained in the car. And to me, this was such a, a fascinating uh, aspect. And so, and um, this, the, this Fiat Zik was the response to the fascination of the quality of the engineering, not to hide with a, a body, but to emphasize with a minimalistic design. Nice. Uh, so uh, then you move, uh, you were the man behind the, the Multipla and also the Trepiuno, something that is uh, not widely known, as far as I know. So you have two sides at the same time. You develop one car that is loved by each and every people in the car scene, the 500, the, the 3P1 concept, and then you have the multipla. So talking about the, the center in the talk about the multipla, how many interviews have you done about the multipla styling? Are you bored about talking <laughs> about the multipla? Thousands, <laughs> thousands, since day one, since day one. <laughs> You know that Multipla had the concept car presented it in Paris two years before the commercial launch. So we were in Paris '96 with the green Multipla that, which was exactly uh, the same uh, design, the same features of the production unit. So, so we we anticipated the, the the communication of Multipla two years in advance. And, to to and uh, it was, no, no, it was uh, because uh, Cantare, Paolo Cantarella was the CEO at the time, 
Yeah. He said, uh, we are so proud of this project. And then we want to present it, uh, not as a clinic test, not to test the reaction, just to show you. And this was an incredible uh, venue where uh, Michael Schumacher was uh, driving Ferrari Formula One. Um, Carla Bruni was not married. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I mean, uh, the, the atmosphere was creative. You know, these uh, 90s were a beautiful era in terms of uh, creativity. If you look at the, well, no, everything, Ford car, I mean, uh, the, the first Ford car, yeah. uh, um, the Vespa, the new Vespa with the steel body in the new design concept, the, even the, the Mercedes Smart, I mean, uh, those were the years, uh, the Mercedes A-Class, I mean, where, um, you know, innovation on uh, technology for, for uh, plausible and feasible projects were, was at the top. I mean, new standards. And um, because I was a fanatic of the multi-purpose vehicle, because I, I, I found myself driving uh, little vans since uh, I was 18 with my new license, I was so uh, in love with this um, new generation of uh, space-efficient vehicles since uh, 600 multiple, 600 multiple of Jacosa, and then uh, uh, the little vans uh, of Fiat, and then, uh, of course, the first uh, um, cruiser has a monovolume mono as a cruiser, like the Renault Espace, and then uh, Renault Chenic, which was our uh, competitor. And we said, why, why enlarge or inflate a, a sedan body to have exactly the same cockpit? Why uh, three 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 rows uh, seats are uh, basically uh, the worst idea to transport six people in a car because the two in the third row in the back are basically isolated um, so that's why the multiple started with the consideration on the cockpit uh, that was the the key idea how to move uh, again inside out to me with a wonderful design in terms of execution. Because, uh, you know, this is the, the story of the people uh, who cannot understand why car design is basically the apotheosis, the extreme level of architecture. And when architects uh, dreams about cockpits, about uh, abitacoli, so uh, cockpits, and they dream in their futuristic idea how to create uh, a cockpit residential architecture, uh, car designers are involved day, every day in this, and they can prefigure anything about, you know, the livability, livability of the space, interaction with the people, having a nice trip uh, um, in freedom, uh, conversating in the car without any kind of device, interphones, etc just using your voice, your gesture. And uh, so the multipla has been shaped this inside out. To me, it's the best design <laughs> the, uh, a car company had to, to do, especially with these limits to don't exceed in terms of length with uh, more than four meters. Uh, you know, you can park your multipla where a punto yeah. is letting uh, the space in a city. So it's, a, it's an incredible car. Uh, this double decker, in another keyword of the multiple was the double decker, and everybody reminds the route master in London, the yeah. two decks uh, bus. But no, the double decker for us was uh, the surface uh, below the the floor, the volume below the floor. That was uh, um, where uh, where uh, uh, gas CNG tanks or uh, batteries were uh, allocated. You know, we, there was a hybrid multipla yeah. built in, uh, in some tens of units for, uh, for the Campania region in Italy, so the Naples yeah. city. Um, so this car was so innovative in terms of distributing the, the, the weights uh, in the lower platform to don't sacrifice any cubic centimeter for uh, 
uh, CNG tanks for uh, this wonderful methane gas uh, multiplan. We also had the GPL version, the LPG version, totally safe for the occupants because you hadn't any, you know, toroidal tank in the, <laughs> the trunk yeah, yeah. and everything outside the car. I mean, this car is a wonderful design if you understand design. If you don't understand design, of course, is, uh, you know, the ugly duck, you know, okay, the, the lower head lamps were, uh, were ugly because we accepted to purchase a, a glass lens component. This is the only, the only criticism I have this this design is the are the lower beam uh, headlamps because uh, uh, you know we we were forced to move uh, the headlamps uh, downward because uh, the first uh, multiple had all the headlamps on the upper fascia yeah then uh, I was forced to move the, the the low beam on the lower position for uh, for a critic from uh, an experimental engineer where uh, ex experimentation engineer, he said, uh, in extremely fog condition, this, uh, this uh, beam is uh, creating a problem for the driver. That was not completely true, but actually we, we were forced to move one element to the lower uh, part. But I mean, so you can consider the multiple with all the high beam and low beam in the, what we call the, we call the bra, the regisseno, or the, <laughs> <laughs> it's just, uh, I have pictures of the of the prototype in these conditions. It was wonderful. I mean, we had no no uh, things uh, to break uh, above the one meter of height. I mean, it's been incredible. I mean, extremely incredible. And um, I just want to ask you: it, it was Paolo Sorry, Mantarella. One second. Yeah. Okay, please, William. I just want to ask you right now, uh, Panto, Paolo Cantarella was the man behind this idea. Is, is the starter of the of this idea asking for it for Nevio Di Gustio or is something that started in the styling department and then moved to Paolo Cantarella? Uh, yeah, Paolo Cantarella, Di Giusto was my boss. Di Giusto as an yeah. engineer was the boss of design from uh, since 92. Uh, he became my boss. There was good feeling because when you in the design group, you have an engineer with an open mind as him, you have the freedom to express, not your hands are not uh, obliged to, to execute the, you know, things at the taste of your boss. You have the openness to invent. And so Nevio Di Giusto was the the very open mind uh, men who joined innovation engineer, advanced engineer and design. He, he collected these two departments in one facility, that was, which was great. And then uh, Paolo Cantarella was visiting uh, uh, the studio at uh, eight o'clock in the evening uh, and he approached my table. I use a um, uh, very large uh, drawing table as a Tazebao to collect uh, ideas and was clear to him that we were uh, thinking something with uh, two rows of seat with three passenger abreast and that, that was the key idea because I used uh, especially my skills of designer are also to represent people to represent uh, uh, people in the car yeah. currency uh, I don't like uh, to start with um, you know a uh, a cotton wool uh, and some pastels and uh, and making my hand flowing and then think what I can do with this color. <laughs> I like, I am more uh, the, you know, the comics illustrator. I start with, uh, with people, I start dimensioning the car with my skills of designing persons, dogs, uh, and people on the road. Uh, and so that's why the multipla to me is the most proportionate car we design ever because uh, it started from uh, designing uh, figures. And so Paolo Cantarella joined silently my table. I was the only guy in the studio at night. And he said, oh, this is an interesting uh, approach to shorten the car and to have uh, a lot of trunk of, of, uh, of um, so 500, 
uh, centimetri cubici, uh, so it's 500 uh, cubic uh, square, cubic uh, uh, centimeter, and so a lot of trunk and uh, six uh, uh, standard seats, not uh, uh, fortune seats. And this is the great thing of the Multipla, is that you can accommodate uh, uh, whoever <laughs> in uh, one of the seats, and uh, she or he can found the same comfort, the same safety, the same condition of uh, dialogue inside the, the cockpit, with a lot of luggage on the back, and with great access because you don't have so the multiple is full field of concept also ingress ingress is great because uh, the car is wide but uh, now one, one one meter 87 centimeter is standard for for a C, cuv at the time was uh, the the dimension of our lancia kappa so the e segment and but uh, ingress ingress was better because the door is slimmer with a better safety because uh, also the the, the anti-intrusion bar was placed exactly where uh, it has to be. Uh, you are your uh, elbow exactly on the balcony and not uh, finding an armrest. Uh, how I'm looking now, I'm in a very good stealth view, but yeah. <laughs> I have to search this. I'm lucky to find this uh, to my comfort, but on the multiple, everybody can accommodate uh, perfectly uh, without, uh, you know, regulating or adjusting something. I mean, uh, this is, to me, this is uh, the most perfect design. We <laughs> we studied not only in the design studio, but also with uh, an incredible team. Um, uh, Mauro Pieralini has a uh, body shell and interior engineer. Um, Valentino Guidi has the model responsible. I found really open mind people and uh, the approach was totally different even for the dashboard uh, uh, i said uh, ever why we, why we have to place all the surfaces of commands and screens in the same plane why we cannot uh, use the three dimensionally to dimensionality to place the things where would they they must be and um, so it was really uh, a very open uh, platform and uh, the shape has took with these two volumes the lower has the mechanical body the platform and the upper has the 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 glass the glass uh, uh, house uh, the greenhouse is yeah. has been incredibly well executed in terms of uh, simplifying the shape you know there's no character line there's nothing as a sculpture in this car is made by volumes volumes not by you know character lines. I ever hated this this uh, line du caractère. I mean, this to me, it's, uh, I mean, uh, moving from a uh, product design, this has been ever um, strange. And when you look at the Aurelia B24, one of the most wonderful car ever in terms of proportion, the Lancia Aurelia B24 is uh, is the first Gran Turismo ever, and there's. There's no character line. There's nothing affecting the pure body. And to me, Multipla, it's, it's a nice car. But when you, this summer, we have to conversate uh, with a German uh, journalist. And she was so uh, crazy to see how this guy has produced the ugliest car on earth and then designed such a cute car as the Cinquecento. Yeah. You, you, it's not probably him. And she was always, always pointing at the fact that there was not uh, similarity to the cars. And of course, I told her that any project is a single uh, aspect. And the family feeling of Fiat is being is point directly to the experience of the of the of the and the quality of the trip of the journey, not uh, the idea to place uh, your your um, useless family feeling and blame. I mean, this is a, yeah. another strange thing where car design has, uh, you know, jumped in a pothole and uh, never, uh, never accepted the idea to start from the scratch. Why, why did why did Fiat restyle the car so fast? Only three years after launching it, because the car is doing well, fifty thousand units per year around that at that time. And then they decide to change the face, uh, lower the headlamps, 
and then the car slows to 25,000 units per year in Europe. It was a mistake. It's something that was uh, necessary to change the phase. It was a useless operation. I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not I, I, believe me, I was not involved. I, I was not a CEO, I was not a vice president, of course. I, I've been ever a designer talking uh, very simple. Now I am in a homologation session. I'm talking with the engineer of the governor. I mean, uh, I mean, to me, it's uh, natural when you are in control of a project. You, you are clear, you are honest. And um, the restyling of multiple was useless, was a loss of money. Stop. And, um, and so this, uh, this uh, attempt to normalize the multiple, because uh, the idea was to normalize, this is the, <laughs> the right, the right uh, word, <laughs> the right description was useless, because uh, it emphasized something that was not uh, compatible with such a face, because... Uh, you know, pillars were absolutely vertical, and um, even uh, the attempt of uh, uh, Honda FRV yeah. was to use the same concept of the design of the packaging, but shrinking down the center seats to a useless dimension, uh, just good for, for children or so for very small pe persons, and uh, emphasizing this vertical aspect with a normal design. So that is the, 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 the greatest mistake you can do when you approach a different package. Um, sorry, Guillermo, but uh, I, 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 I work on a Gioponti project of 1952. Gioponti was a master of style and quality of ideas. And Gioponti designed a car, actually, and <laughs> nobody has produced this car in 1952. Believe me, this car was the first hatchback in the history. You, you developed uh, it to the to a real one that was shown a few years ago, right? Yeah, in uh, in Basel. Yeah, I made this project. I did the the the, the 3D for uh, the Domus magazine in Italy, yeah. and we presented this car in Grand Basel show. <laughs> okay, the car was. Uh, was, uh, it looks made by cardboard, I mean, very flat, etc. <laughs> but Gioponti was clear. He was the, the, the genius of the Italian design, really appreciated in uh, today more than, uh, in the, uh, for, more than ever. And he said, uh, let's stop with this useless uh, gonfie, inflated surfaces. And he was right. I mean, <laughs> he was right. Inflated surfaces are for nothing. I mean, I can believe uh, and can accept, uh, um, you know, a round shape when you are exceeding the cockpit, uh, when you are uh, uh, working on a, on a sport car, when you are in a condition where the co cockpit is so small for technical aspect and, the, you know, your tracks are so wide and you have to connect these two extremes. But when you work on a, on a as a Gioponti car, on a sedan hatchback, I mean, he, the first thing he did was to flatten the, the surface of the um, windows and sides. And then uh, Giugiaro made uh, in the 80s the Chroma and the, the Lanciatema were absolutely elegant cars, very functional and elegant because uh, in the 80s, uh, finally, we found that uh, we don't need shoulders to look better. Yeah. yeah? I cannot. Why, why we we are back to shoulders? I mean, this is. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. If you look the Citroen Ami, yeah. it's an interesting concept, and there are no shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot stop thinking that the multiply is something ahead of its time, and you developed a car that was flat in the floor, and it's a proper car to electrify. I, I think that. It's a concept of a car that if you launch it tomorrow, it will make, make sense. Uh, tell me I'm wrong <laughs> or not. <laughs> yeah, 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 it was too advanced, but also um, never is too advanced. I mean, nothing is too advanced properly. Uh, the idea that uh, design uh, form uh, follow communication, it's important because 
our role is to educate people. Um, I mean, there are cars which were badged as ugly uh, because we're, especially when they are overloaded of design, of styling, uh, they want to look uh, better with uh, the fins uh, or, uh, you know, the NSU prints at yeah. the time was a competitor of the Fiat 500 was considered ugly because uh, the car was uh, trying to look as a Chevrolet Corvair, but it was uh, uh, longer, is shorter than my tub in my house, in my bathroom. <laughs> and, and so looking as a Chevrolet Corvair that was such a, a style car, I mean, this was, uh, you know, the considered ugly. But when you shape something in terms of that, that this works, this work, as Giugiaro said, the multiply is not beautiful in terms of fascination, but it works. And uh, it tried to make something. You remember the Ital design Structura. Yeah. Structura was, uh, and also Ramachotti said to me in Pinifarina, they tried to replicate the multiply for Hyundai with this matrix, etc. But but they wasn't capable to accommodate six people as the multiple did <laughs> in the same dimension because uh, they had to add, uh, add some volume on the sides. And this was the, the, the wrong thing to do in a concept where you want to make this working perfectly day by day. You, you need to fall in love day by day, not uh, you know when the yeah. car is rotating on the platform. Yeah. That's why... I consider uh, multiple, yeah, adva in advance with the time, but probably the communication was not sufficiently um, compelling for, uh, we had this spot with Michael Schumacher in Ferrari restaurant, uh, was good because the car was not uh, appearing actually, it was, uh, <laughs> uh, Michael was uh, placing the seats uh, exactly as uh, he, he has seen on, uh, on this car, telling the story of this car to some friends. And the, 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 the good thing is, was the, the waiter pulling the, 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 the trailer of the, the trolley of the cakes. <laughs> he, he stole, uh, he has stolen the, 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 the trolley to simulate the trunk. That was the, <laughs> the most appealing uh, part of the spot. I mean, uh, the, you have to say clearly, um, stop with the useless, uh, uh, and empty surfaces in the cars. Let's stop with uh, useless space front and rear. Uh, and um, and Marco Paolini, an actor, a theater uh, actor, he made that a very compelling communication for the multipla as um, as a theater piece. Um, but this uh, this uh, this movie is not uh, around again because uh, you know the copyright has been limited for the first month of the uh, presentation of the car. This was a very intelligent way to communicate the car. And this was uh, the, the forma il contenuto, yeah. is the, the content and the content is the shape. Yeah. Uh, so it was interesting because... Right. Uh, last but not least, last question, I, I promise you. Uh, there was an Avart apparent package when you launched the car. There was an intention to develop some kind of sporting version of the multipla when you have it on the on the boarding design on the design board no, no we we made a uh, very interesting uh, suv version because uh, suv means uh, sport utility vehicle not uh, of old not uh, adventure you know that uh, three women uh, brought a multipla la uh, last week in uh, in senegal from milan with 200,000 kilometers on the clock, and they they delivered this car to an association of women in Senegal for save children from a, a disease, uh, ice disease. I mean, um, it was a this was not an, a sport version. There was a an SUV meant to be um, usage of the internal space better. I placed uh, some barchetta. Uh, steel wheels uh, instead of the plastic covers to have an even more minimalistic design on the wheels. Uh, and I used, uh, Guillermo, this kit we, we, we commercialized with Zender that was uh, pretty sportive, but to me was interesting because the bumpers were cleaner 
and you probably probably only in Switzerland is sold very well um, <laughs> with 17 inches wheels. But uh, my idea was to lift the car uh, a little bit um, to don't have problems with uh, unmade roads and uh, to have um, a light color like beige. I want to replicate this car because uh, it was an official proposal. It's never reached the production, but um, was uh, to me was the right uh, approach sp to sport utility because uh, sport utility means uh, uh, a car useful for sportive people. It would Not, be great if, if you that, do that. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So the multiplier is totally good for people uh, making sports because I know a lot of people uh, from uh, uh, every kind of uh, adventure sport, uh, so parapendio, um, mountain bike, yeah. mountain bike, yeah. but also paracadutisti, as uh, parachute, etc. So it's everything. I mean, I know a lot of people, uh, free climbers, they use the multipla to go uh, everywhere. Yeah. This is such a great conversation, but I want to, to leave you to, to do your work. Congratulations for the multipla, Roberto. It's a real, it's something that you never forget. When you have driving one and feel it, it's something that never leaves you. So it's a pity that you don't have a multipla currently in the Fiat lineup. Maybe in the future, I don't know. But anyway, thank you so much for your time and again, congratulations. Uh, thank, thank you, you Guillermo. Yeah. I, I am boring sometimes when I I start <laughs> talking about uh, the projects I work with because uh, I'm not I'm not the, the father, daddy of multiple children. I'm you know an interactor. I mean, I, I ever shake the people in uh, trying to f make something uh, relevant, and Chicochent has been relevant in our approaches. Uh, uh, we 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 persuaded we. We convinced all the management to go to produce a car. The Fiat was not uh, was not uh, interested to produce because uh, we were we were producing an A segment as Panda, and uh, so the Cinquecento was superfluous. And uh, and eventually the company decided to produce because uh, there were stories, there were um, concepts uh, delivered to the people uh, in the company first to reach the external customers. It was so interesting creating this uh, this uh, concept uh, and uh, I thank you Guglielmo for uh, for this question because um, these are also bringing me to these uh, keywords like inside out or, uh, <laughs> or uh, you know, human centric which are probably yeah very useful for the future also they are missing right now when you see the SUVs and so on. Cars that are designed from the exterior to the interior instead of starting from the people. So the, the car design world miss some kind of uh, understanding of what do you need to develop a proper people car. So anyway, thank you so much, Roberto.